Good morning, guys. I thought I'd talk to you today about subcooling. We've talked a lot about superheat, what it is, what causes high superheat and low superheat, and every superheat in between. But what is subcooling? Because we measure subcooling all the time when we have an expansion valve to set a charge. But what exactly is it? What subcooling is, is very similar to superheat, except superheat is heat that refrigerant takes on after it switches from liquid to gas, whereas subcooling is heat that is lost from the refrigerant after it turns from gas to liquid. When refrigerant enters the condenser, the compressor is pumping out hot gas that is superheated hot gas whenever it compresses the suction gas coming back and sends it to the condenser. Once it's in the condenser, air starts moving across the tube and fin coil, microchannel coil, whatever kind of coil it has via the fan and begins to cool the refrigerant back off again. Once the refrigerant is cooled to the saturation temperature, it begins to form liquid. So you have a liquid vapor mix. As it keeps cooling, it becomes a solid column of liquid. Then every degree it cools underneath its saturation point is a subcooling. And you'll get a target subcooling when you're charging because Basically, they want to ensure that liquid is making it to the piston, expansion device, whether it be uh, mechanical, electronic. They just want to make sure it's solid liquid going to that expansion device so you can get a good change from liquid back to gas in the evaporator. If you have a liquid gas mix going to the expansion device, you're not going to have nearly as much cooling because cooling comes from that change from liquid to gas where it sucks heat out of the air. So basically, subcooling is a guarantee that we're going to get that liquid to the expansion device, and they give you a number to shoot for. And that's all it is. So in the upcoming video series, we'll talk about subcooling, which is a little bit simpler in respect to how we're going to deal with it in the field. But that is subcooling. It's just refrigerant turning from gas back to liquid. The amount of temperature drop underneath the saturation point for that liquid. Let's say a liquid refrigerant condenses at 95 degrees. If we measure the liquid line exiting the condenser, which is usually what I do, it's just convenient. And you measure 85 degrees, then you have a 10 degree subcooling. Very simple, very easy calculation. You can look right at the pressure temperature chart to get the saturation temperature and then compare it with the temperature measured on the line. You subtract a line temperature from the saturation temperature and you have your subcooling.